It's time for Recipe of the Day. I love deviled eggs and, you know, really for like the last year, maybe two years, any time that I'm invited to any kind of like daytime thing, a brunch, little craft meetup, anything like that, I take deviled eggs and they get eaten up so quickly. But I always make a double batch and I'm thinking, oh, my kids will wake up, they'll snack on these, maybe Marty will have some. And when I get home, I can have some. They're gone when I get home every time, I swear. So I am telling you about these today because I am home today. We are doing some nice long weekend Memorial Day stuff and I'm making deviled eggs for us at home so I can have some too. And I thought I'd tell you how to make them as well. So I have been making a lot of these and I had a really good recipe before, but now it is perfected. And so I'm going to share this with you. It is a fairly classic deviled egg recipe with just a little twist, which is just a little bit of fresh herbs added to it. I like to go in with dill and chives, but either one of those. And it just brings a little bit of brightness. Otherwise, it's pretty classic with mayonnaise and a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of mustard powder for that heat. And then I put a little bit of cream or milk just to smooth it out. So that is basically what's going on in these deviled eggs. Before I tell you how to make them, I just want to tell you why they're called deviled eggs because I was curious. And it's actually because they're a little bit spicy. And if you go back into the 19th century, you hear the word deviled referring to spicy and zesty food, usually with mustard mustard, or pepper. Other examples would be deviled ham or from the Italian fra diavolo pasta sauce, that diavolo devil, also spicy. So that is why they're deviled eggs. And I will just say that I was in a restaurant a couple years ago in, I think I was in Georgia, and the eggs were called dressed eggs. And I have looked that up and they are the same ones. It's just that in some parts of the United States where it's taboo to use the word devil, they will call them stuffed eggs, salad eggs, or dressed eggs, just like those ones. Okay, how to make these perfect deviled eggs that my family is going crazy over. So you're going to start by hard boiling the eggs. I swear by the Instant Pot for this. I am sure you've heard me talk about it. You basically put 10 eggs into the Instant Pot. You can do as many as 12. It's not going to screw it up. With one cup of water, the eggs are on like a trivet or steamer basket that came with your Instant Pot or one that's heat safe. And then you seal it up and you're high pressure cooking for five minutes. It's going to take about five minutes for it to come to heat. Then it pressure cooks for five minutes. And then you do a natural release. I actually like to do it for four minutes. A lot of people say five minutes. Probably doesn't matter that much. I just would rather err on the side of slightly less done than slightly overdone. Four minutes natural release, then you vent it. Now put them immediately into cold water after that, and then they stop cooking. But what is amazing is the peels just come off so beautifully, which matters for deviled eggs because you want those whites to look really nice. So anything that's going to give you the nicest possible shape and whites, less of those pock marks on the outside from where the shell didn't come off the egg, that's what you want, which is why I love Love the Instant Pot for this. My second favorite for peeling is to steam the eggs, and I will put a link to steaming eggs in there for you. If you have a technique for hard boiling that works for you, do that. The other alternative is to buy already hard boiled eggs. The one at the grocery stores, they come in a little bag that's sealed. Those ones are always perfect looking in there too, and that's super convenient because you could just grab them and start cooking them. And I have actually done a dinner based around this for the four of us before, where I've just done some store bought hard boiled eggs made into deviled eggs with some toast and some like tomato and cucumber salad salad, quick dinner, everybody ate it. So that is an option for that kind of thing. So then once your eggs are cooled and really the easiest thing to do is just put them in some cold water or even two batches of cold water, or you can do like an ice bath. So it's cold water with ice cubes. They're going to chill down. Then you peel them, peel them under running water or rinse them under running water as you go. And that will get any little bits of shell off. And then you're cutting them in half. I have heard of people using unflavored dental floss to get a nice clean cut through the eggs. I don't find that necessary in my brain can't wrap around keeping the eggs steady while the floss is going through. I'm just probably picturing it wrong. I just use a sharp, thin bladed knife, not serrated. My serrated knife kind of leaves little grooves in the egg white as I cut through. So non-serrated knife. And then what I do is I keep the tap running on like a gentle flow in my kitchen sink so that I can moisten the knife in between slices. It makes it easier to go through if it's wet. And I also keep a damp paper towel on the work surface beside me. And then I can wipe the knife off on there if I need to. If it starts to get egg yolk sort of stuck to it, then I wipe it so that that egg yolk doesn't transfer to the white of the next egg. So that's what I'm doing to cut my eggs cleanly in half. Then you just pop the yolk halves out of the egg whites, arrange the egg
egg whites on a tray or platter. Now, I've seen lots of people do this directly in a zip top bag because they're going to kind of pipe it out of the bag later. So they put the yolks into the bag. And I have tried this and you will actually see that kind of pictured on my site. But I actually find it harder to mash that egg smoothly in the bag than to just use a bowl. So pop those egg yolks into a bowl. And then for 12 hard boiled eggs that you've put the yolks into that bowl, you're adding a quarter cup of mayonnaise, a tablespoon of whipping cream, heavy cream, or milk. That's just going to make it a little bit smoother. And then at least a tablespoon of chopped chives and a tablespoon of fresh chopped dill. You of course don't have to if you don't want to. I will say I've tried dried dill in there and it didn't taste as good. So definitely if you're going to do it, go for the fresh in this one. And then it's just a half teaspoon of lemon juice, a half teaspoon of mustard powder. That's a little bit spicy. If you want it spicier, you could go with a little bit more. And then just a quarter teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of paprika. Now you can do regular paprika, smoked paprika. If you're doing hot paprika, just realize that you're raising the heat more than that mustard powder, if you want to be aware of that. And you're going to need a little bit more paprika for the garnish at the end. Then you mash that all up. I will say that I do taste it and make sure that there is enough salt, and I just like tasting it. But because the different eggs can be different size, if you have bigger eggs or smaller eggs, the yolks were bigger or smaller, you want to just make sure the salt amount was good. And you do want it to have a nice bit of salt to it because the egg whites aren't getting seasoned in this recipe, right? Only the yolks are. And so having it just on the slight saltier edge is a good idea. Then scoop that mashed up yolk into a piping bag or a zip top bag. Just make sure that your zip top bags are not flat bottomed for easy filling because those don't have nice defined corners that you can cut up. They're kind of like tapered or gathered at the corners and you really need to be able to cut off a nice little corner like a quarter inch after you've added that egg yolk mixture to there, cut off the corner of the bag and then you use kind of a swirling motion to pipe that yolk into your egg white halves. I'm always slightly worried that I'm not going to have enough but there is always ways enough. Sometimes there's even a little bit left over. So don't worry about that. And then you're just going to go in with a little bit more of the paprika or smoked paprika, sort of between your fingers, pinch between your fingers, high up over the eggs and just sprinkle. And that's going to give it a little red dusting all over. You could also go in with a little bit of dill or chive onto each one. That looks really pretty too. And then these guys you can serve immediately or cover loosely and refrigerate for up to one day. They're going to be just fine. I will just say if you're making them a day ahead, make a couple extra because you're probably going to pop them in your mouth every time you open the fridge. Okay, I'll put the link to this recipe in the show notes, or you can head to cookthestory.com slash ROTD to get it there. And I just wanted to say thank you again. Yesterday was our 1000th episode of this podcast, 1000 days in a row. And I just keep thinking about it and thinking about how much I love doing this, how much joy it has brought to me, how much I have loved connecting with you all out there. So I wanted to say thank you again. And remember, remind you that if you have not subscribed to the show already, now is a great time to do it. That just gets me into your podcast feed every single day. Very easy to do. Head to cookthestory.com slash ROTD. And if you're on your phone, you push on, click on one of those buttons there for Apple Podcasts, YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts, and it'll take you there. You hit follow or subscribe. The other thing you could do is search for recipe of the day wherever you listen to podcasts, and you'll find me there. And if there's an option to leave a rating and a comment or review, do that as well. I really appreciate it. It. I'm Christine Pittman from cookthestory.com, thecookful.com, the all new chicken cookbook, and from this podcast recipe of the day. I hope you have a great day. Let's get cooking. <laughs> <laughs>